Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so today we got a 2008 Elantra. Uh, customer complaint, AC is not working. Um, so right now I put in turn on the AC um, and then perform a full system scan just to double check. I know this is an older car. This should be a basic and straightforward. But let's just cover our bases. So right now AC is on. Uh, it's on coldest and I'm reading around 30 degrees there and the vents same thing right so um, I'm just gonna finish all this um, system scan and then I think the data for AC pressure and these buttons here it should be the engine side so we're gonna go check that just to make sure our input from this guy here that's uh, uh, reaching to the computer or the ECM Okay, so we're done with the full system scan the one with the X um, This one it says here ABS not Communicated, but I'm not worried about that. But anyway, the air conditioning It's X because it's not auto Dot time pressure monitoring. So let's just go check our DTCs what we have here battery low voltage oh, okay so it's all battery vo low voltage okay i have to check for the condition of the battery for this one so let's go to the engine data and let's look for that ac pids i hope we can find one okay so we're in an engine data right now i grab our fan low speed um, high AC switch, AC compressor, and AC status. I can't find any um, AC pressure um, reading, right? A PID. So I guess it's not yet on this 08 models. So anyway, um, I'm gonna turn on our AC, and we can see here on our AC switch it turns on, AC status is on, but the compressor is off. Our fan and low, fan low and fan high speed is off. I'm gonna turn it off. Our AC button, right? And we can see here that it's off and off. So at least for me, um, it's good that it recognizes when I press this button here. It recognizes to the ECU. So now we're just gonna go under the hood and let's do some visual inspection first before I hook up the gauge or the machine and see what's our pressure reading at least and then we can start from there maybe we get low refrigerant or a compressor issue but we'll see okay here's our under the hood uh, our alternator belt is brand new <laughs> our AC belt is there it's present compressor is spinning but the clutch is not spinning there so okay i think my best thing here is to check if we have refrigerant in the system at least if you can see the pressure and we'll we'll proceed from there okay here's our pressure reading this one didn't move our high side when I hook up our toes, but this one I went to 50 or almost 60 PSI, but it's still too low. So um, I'm gonna turn on our AC. So AC is on. For some reason, my AC went on earlier. I was off on our AC compressor. Right now, it's on. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I'm gonna turn it off, on again. And yeah, you can see there. Okay, it turns on. But earlier, it was off. I don't know why what happened. So, I'm gonna go to our gauge. So at least our compressor clutch there is on there. You can see that it's spinning. Uh -oh. 
So I have pressure right now, 140. So I think it's getting cold right now. I think. Is our fan turning on? My fan is not on. Okay. My fan is not on. My fan is not on. But you can see my compressor is still on here. And nothing happens here. Well, my compressor is on. Okay. So, uh, what's our next? Um, just to cover my bases here. I'm going to double check um, our refrigerant in the system. I'm going to recover it. I will let you know and then if not I guess I'm gonna go check our um, fan cooling fan so you know what let's go here maybe if I can do an actuation test let's see here if there's an option for this old car engine fuel pump radiator fan and low okay so let me just turn this off ignition on okay so I'm gonna grab our data fan low fan high grab that so I'm going to start with the fan low, start, okay, that's turning on, stop, let's go fan high, okay. but this one doesn't do anything here on our data, maybe it's too old to have that function. But when I turn on our low, doesn't on our low side here doesn't turn on. So start. Yeah, nothing happens here. On the high, I can hear the fan. And it's not turning on here. Okay, so at least that's turning on and off on our fan. Now I'm just gonna double check our. Our refrigerant there because earlier um, was a little bit low right I think I said that this guy didn't move or something like that but yeah I'm gonna do a recovery first and see our refrigerant so open open what do you have right now seven pound and seven ounce okay seven pound and seven ounce okay so done with the recovery Earlier, the tank was uh, has a seven pound, seven ounce, and I think it just added two ounce, so we're empty here. So let me vacuum this, recharge it to spec, and let's see again the operation of the AC. Okay, so I did a vacuum. Let's charge this, and it's calling for 17 ounce. So that's one pound and one ounce, or 500 grams. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil. Yes. Let's just double check and see if we have leaks or not. So while charging, just also, I know we're, you're working in a shop, it's loud. People are using their air tool, vacuum bleeder, but yeah, if you can just, you know, while while the machine is charging the system, just take a here, um, maybe there's a leak, so that you can prevent right away, right? But in this case, I'm just gonna close this guy here. We're done with our charge. Now let's go inside the shop. Uh, you can see here, we got 100. PSI and the low 
600 on our high earlier was 50 and I'm not sure what was the reading here on the high side but yeah let's go into the car okay I got my scan tool here again So I'm just gonna pull up the same data that we got earlier. Start this car. Turn on our AC. AC is on. AC switch compressor on. AC status is on. And our fan is on now, as you can see there. Just waiting for our vents to cool. Earlier was 30 degrees, right? We're reading 30 degrees on our vents so at least we got so right now we're reading 26 so that's okay it's dropping um, fast now 24 so definitely we got a low refrigerant issue on this one so that's why our fan also didn't turn on because um, we did have no refrigerant in the system, two ounce. And earlier I was, you know, puzzled that why is it off? It's usually the compressor will not turn on, it has low refrigerant. But I don't know, for some reason after we hook up the machine, our compressor turned on. So, and the clutch was on the, on the compressor too. So, that's good. Let's just double check again here. Okay, nine, oops. We got 18 degrees there. That should be the same yeah 18 degrees on the passenger side okay so i'm gonna let it run for a little bit and then i i put some oil that dye in the in the ac system and then let's just double check i'm gonna use my ultrasonic detector and we can also use a flashlight the what we call that um ultraviolet <laughs> light i think that's the name but anyway i'm gonna use those two and uh, let's just see if we can find the leak or it could be just it was just depleted for how many years if it was original refrigerant since 2008 and right now it's 2024 that's more than 10 years i think yeah 08 10 yeah more than 10 years so yeah um, i'm gonna let it run our ac system at least to circulate the refrigerant and maybe the oil and shut it off and then let's let's see if we can find a leak if not i guess um, we'll just tell the customer to monitor it for now and see okay so our clutch there and our compressor is work turning on All right it's on our cooling fan is on there and here's our pressure reading um, our high side is around 125 something like that and our low side is around 42 44 psi right okay so i'm gonna turn off this car now I'll just double check last time so right now we're reading there on our vents 14 degrees that's good that's cold enough let me just turn this off so now what we're gonna do is let's just double check if we can find a leak and yeah let's see okay so i'll be using my ultrasonic here um no i i that's not ultrasonic it says here and for red refrigerant leak detector so i don't know if it's an ultrasonic but anyway um this is the brand not a sponsor <laughs> but I guess this is the uh, budget friendly, right? And it's good. So I'm just w waiting to warm it up. Um, yeah. Okay, first, when you use this one, set it in high. 
and then we're just gonna adjust it if we know if um, we find a spot that it's making that noise and then we can adjust it if it's really from there right so first we're gonna start on our service port first so nothing there that's the, that was the low side and uh, this one is on the high side so we're gonna take it out a little bit let's adjust our sensitivity let's go to medium and go back again uh, it's still there uh, we're gonna go low now go back again Uh, we still have that I'm gonna double check on our um, low pressure service port leave it there our low side doesn't do anything as you can see that uh, there's a little bit but okay let's change our sensitivity to medium try again That's nothing. It's more than 15 seconds there on the port compared to our high side here. That's less than 10 seconds and it detects right away. So I don't know if that's okay. I can see some bubbles there. You know what? Let's spray some soap and water. Where's my soap and water? Is this the soap and water? I think this is soap and water. Is this soap and water? Yeah, this is soap and water. So I'm gonna spray that. Let's see if there's some bubbles there. There's no bubbles here. So I just sprayed that with the soap and water. I didn't see any bubbles earlier and I blow it with air. So I guess it cleaned up. So far I don't that the tool didn't detect anything. Right? So I'm just gonna go around with the lines and see if we can detect something. And usually one indication too is the the condition of the lines if it's soaked with oil that's most likely your issue there and if you compare it with the other lines that they don't have any oil they're dry right so this guy i guess it was a false false result earlier so nothing right okay that's good okay let me just see here let's double check it 
so I don't want to waste more time here, right? Ah, my condenser. I can run through my detector to see if I can find anything from the condenser side, but I don't see any um, indication there that it's gonna be leaking from there. Um, the last thing will be we're gonna check underneath the vehicle, the EVAP uh, drain plug, oh, not EVAP, <laughs> the, oh yeah, EVAP, evaporator core drain plug, um, drain hose there. Let's just quickly check with our de detector tool and see if we can find anything and if not, well, I'm just going to release this vehicle and tell them to monitor for now and see from there. Okay, so we're underneath the vehicle. You locate your drain hose there for evaporator and then you can use your detector. So the, de the detector doesn't you know, detect any refrigerant there. So some guys, what they do is they collect whatever water comes out from here, and then they test that water, right? But we can try like this, and nothing. So yeah, I think it's just over time that's depleted. And let me grab my ultraviolet. Um, what I call that? light and let's see okay so we're underneath the vehicle i'm using my uv light here so i'm just gonna go through here and see right compressor side make sure compressor doesn't see any like dye there and our condenser here on the front I can see some, a little bit, but that could be a coolant too, right? So, so far, that's good. I didn't see anything here. So, yeah, uh, I'm just gonna tell them that this guy needs, um, I will fill the refrigerant in the system. And then, what do you call that? Well, I'm just gonna advise them to monitor it for now and see. At least right now the AC system is working normally. Our compressor, our switch is blowing cold air. I think that's the important thing with the customer. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that um, my process on dealing with these AC issues. I hope you guys enjoyed that and let me know what you guys think and thanks again for watching. See you next time.